Welcome to Behind the Brand, stories and strategies for building your creative business. This is brought to you by the Pine Gate Road Studio. You're listening to episode 37. Welcome to Behind the Brand, stories and strategies for building your creative business. Here we take a deep dive into the brands of heart-centered businesses and entrepreneurs and unveil behind the scenes into how they're building their brands, as well as tips and tricks to how you can build your own dream business. I'm your host, Kelsey Kerslake, and I'm the founder of Pinegate Road, a branding studio for businesses and entrepreneurs ready to get their brands completely figured out. From finding your core values, making that beautiful brand identity that speaks to your ideal audience, to figuring out how to style and strategize your social media platforms and launch your new website. We're here to guide you each step along the way to build your dream business. Head to pinegateroad.com to get in touch today about working together. Hello, you guys. I am so pumped to have you here today. As always, welcome to the Behind the Brand podcast. This week, we have Emily Roggenberg. She is a local photographer. Ugh, photographer. I'm having all sorts of uh, word vomiting issues. She's a local photographer here in Cleveland, and she's really taken that locality and made it something that is a part of her business. So while photography sometimes might seem like it's a really saturated market, I love Emily's story because she took photography and then said, what aren't people doing with photography? What can I do with photography? What can I leverage that is unique to me, unique to where I'm living, and unique to certain situations going on in the world? And I think this is a really cool example of getting creative with your niche and just kind of putting yourself out there and going for it. So I'm really excited for Emily to share all that she has been up to, and I hope that you go give her shop a look and enjoy this episode. This week's Branding Bite has been brought to you by audibletrial.com. Head to audibletrial.com slash pinegateroad for a free 30-day trial as well as a download of your choice. So today I want to talk about being a local entrepreneur. We have Emily on the show and she is doing all things Cleveland and she is spreading out to some other cities, but she's also taking that locality and making it a big part of her business. So if local entrepreneurship is something that you want to work on, then I would really suggest adding your city to your website. Make sure that on your blog posts, you are tagging the city that you're in, um, putting it in your SEO settings. If you're on Instagram, make sure that you are also tagging the city that you you want to target. Um, And also just make sure that your business says whatever your business is doing and then the city. Make sure that this is in text and on your website multiple times so that you can rank higher in SEO rankings and start to get more of those local clients. This is just one way you can start to leverage your city and becoming a big part of uh, becoming a big part of that entrepreneurship culture there and having local people find you. Also, you want to meet with other entrepreneurs in your city as well. Find a local group like the Rising Tide Society's Tuesdays Together and join them and just see how things are going. Be a part of the community. Get out there and start to meet those people. I started doing this recently and it was such a huge boost to my self-esteem and also just getting to know the local Cleveland community here. So I'd love for you to challenge yourself to invest in that locality and start to make a difference in your own community. This week's Branding Bite has been brought to you by audibletrial.com. Head to audibletrial.com slash pinegateroad for a free 30 days and a free download of your choice. Now on to the episode. Hi, Emily. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I am so good. I'm so excited to have you on the show. I know we have both kind of had similar paths. Um, in Cleveland and I've never, I've, we have acquaintance friends and things, um, but we never actually got to talk about what is going on in our lives. So I'm excited to finally catch up with you and hear how things have been going since, uh, leaving corporate America. Me too. Yeah. I'm excited to be here and, um, excited to talk about it. Awesome. So first of all, I'd love for you to introduce yourself and then tell people what you are up to now um, and then kind of go into how you started your brand and um, maybe a little bit about your big why and how you kind of got to where you are today. Sure. Okay. Um, so, yep. Uh, my name is Emily Roggenberg and 
I um, I'm originally from Indiana. I went to school there. Um, I went to Indiana University and studied apparel merchandising, business, and fashion design. And then um, kind of the way my life took me was randomly to Cleveland for product development at American Greetings. Um, so definitely first into corporate America. Um, and really, you know, it was for a long time a good mixture of um, using my creative side of my brain and then the business side of my brain as well to be able to um, just create new card product and, and really have fun um, in corporate America. So I did that for five years. And then last summer, um, it was June, um, right when the Cavs won the parade, I actually had the opportunity to go up in a helicopter and take photos and it was a big random thing that happened and since then um i pretty much jumped into the world of being an entrepreneur which has been really exciting and scary at times but um that's kind of the gist of how everything got started awesome so for people that don't know what you're doing um how i guess go back to like how the calves helicopter ride thing happened like i would love to hear that story and then for those of you who don't know, Emily takes um, aerial photography, and I mean, maybe you just want to explain more about what you're doing with yeah. your business and your photos and things like that, because it's a really, while you do photography, it's like a cool, unique niche that you got yourself into, and I'd love to just hear like how that started, and I don't know, it's just so, I'm really interested in hearing about that. Sure. I love that you said got yourself into, because that's like exactly what happened. <laughs> <laughs> It definitely was not something that, um, you know, all throughout my college career or my corporate career, even I was sitting around like, how can I be an aerial photographer? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I got myself into it and it, I just followed the path after that. So, um, yeah, I can definitely explain that a little bit more. What happened was, um, I'll go into like a little bit of the long story sure. and then you can cut me off if I like get too mundane. <laughs> um, So what happened was, uh, yeah, last summer, I'm originally from Indiana, but now live in Cleveland, and I love it. Um, Cleveland, I think, doesn't get enough credit, and especially, I think, being an outsider coming in, I I do think I have a unique perspective on that, because Mm -hmm. a lot of people who are from Cleveland obviously love it, and um, I think that's, that's kind of like another thing that drew me to loving Cleveland so much, is just the passion that the people in the Yes, I love it too. I'm an outsider as well. Um, yeah. But I just, I love the spirit of Cleveland and I never, ever want to leave. <laughs> I know, I agree. It's it's really unique. It really is. Um, and so, yeah, uh, so needless to say, last summer when the Cavs were in the playoffs, it was like the most exciting time. It was um, so amazing. You know, everyone was like downtown watching the games or going to the games. Um, and we were some of the people that were downtown and I just thought we have to capture this. Like I have to get this on photo or take a video or something. Mm -hmm. And the night that they won it all, I obviously was not in the state of mind to like make a wonderful, like beautiful video or, Uh um, get good photos. You know, obviously I was just like basically crying because I was so excited. Uh (laughs) That didn't happen. So, uh, you know, a couple of days later I knew that they were going to have a parade and I just heard pretty much everyone in the city that I had talked to was going to be down there. Um, and I just thought I have to go down there. I think it's going to be so cool. Um, wanted to be there with everyone in Cleveland, but, uh, what happened, you know, I didn't really plan for it. And so it was on a Wednesday and Wednesday came and I actually went to my job at American greeting Uh and, um, I was sitting there at my desk and, you know, I made my usual coffee run, which I'm sure you're very familiar with. Oh yes. (laughs) Um, (laughs) <laughs> and I was sitting with a friend and I said to her, I think we have to get a helicopter today and go take photos of the city. And she was like, ha ha. Okay. Like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and I was like, I just really think it's something that has to be done. I just have this feeling about it. Um, I want to be there so bad, but it's already, it was like 9am when I like came up with this idea. Oh my um, gosh. That's and, crazy. Yeah. Like how did so, it even start? You just were like, I, I should do this. It just came to you. Yeah. So, I mean, I it was a combination of just wanting to be there and, and wanting to capture everything down there. And also, I, um, you know, I had been experimenting a little bit with photography 
myself the last couple, the uh, months prior to that. Uh-huh. So one of my biggest um, muses, I guess you would say, is Gray Malin, who is an aerial beach yes, photographer. Yes, I love and him. I just think things look so amazing from above. Um, you know, it kind of creates this whole like way of seeing things that you don't get any other way. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought, well, that could be really cool. You know, I, I know the way he takes photos usually is not by like a drone or something like that. It's um, by helicopter. And so I thought, well, maybe I can do that. Um, and so I thought that this would be the perfect opportunity to just kind of capture city or I'm sorry, capture these photos of so many people being in the city celebrating. Yeah. So, so that, how did you, <laughs> like, you just called up a helicopter company and was like, take me up there? How does that work? <laughs> yeah, basically. So, it, it was pretty much exactly like that. Oh, I my gosh. pretty much every helicopter company in the city. And, um, of course, you know, it was silly of me because all of them were booked. And I a couple people, like, told me, no, we're booked. A couple people didn't answer. Um a couple of people told me, I think that like you weren't even supposed to be flying that day. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I, I got a hold of one person and he told me everyone, you know, every one of the helicopters that they had were booked and there was no way. And I hung up, you know, kind of feeling defeated. Mm-hmm. And then I called back and I said, well, if it's booked, can I buy out somebody's spot? Like surely there's a price for somebody. Yeah. Is there a way that I could, you know, just see what that quote would be. And he kind of laughed at me and then hung up and <laughs> called me back and said, yeah, actually, somebody did um, say that you could buy out their spot. So wow. it was like five times more than what I was thinking it was going to be probably, but uh, I I just thought it was worth it. That's so. so cool. I love the tenacity you had just to like make that happen <laughs> that day. That's so cool. Oh, Thank you. Um, it is very in line with the spirit of Cleveland and making things happen. So I love that. <laughs> so, <Yeah. Aww. laughs> um, so, okay. So you went up in the helicopter, you got these pictures and then kind of how did you, you started marketing yourself as the Cleve, what are you calling yourself? I'm sorry. The Cleveland aerial <laughs> <No>. photographer. <laughs> Yeah, it is fine. I think this goes along with the idea of branding, which yeah. I obviously you're an expert on. And mm-hmm. I've listened to some of your podcasts, and um, it's interesting what so many different people have to say about branding and right. what you call yourself or what you know how mm-hmm. people see your brand. And I've heard that a lot of people struggle with it at first. Yes. So I don't feel bad saying that I was also one of those people. So how did it Um, kind of start and how did you kind of define your niche and what you're calling yourself now? Yeah, so it started with that, um, with that photo shoot Mm -hmm. about the city. And then, you know, I think from there, I just realized those, so those photos I um, obviously took for consumer sales. So before I was doing more of the services of photography Um, you know, taking family photos and senior portraits and things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Whereas these photos were really for sale by print and, you know, by frame. And so um, I really had to kind of like rethink how I even wanted the setup of something as simple as my website. So I just had to think about everything when it came to branding. And I didn't originally call myself an aerial photographer. I kind of just called myself a photographer. Mm -hmm. Um, And really, I've been over the last like, year that I've still been kind of trying to figure out exactly what this brand is. Um, and I think that's an important exercise to go through because I had to really figure out my why. I think um, for a lot of people, the why comes first. And for me, I think it was something that I didn't realize until later. Mm. While it was there, it just wasn't um, apparent to me until later. Yeah, it's probably, it was like inside of you and then you kind of were just like following your intuition and figuring out how to do things and it was 100% there, but you just, you were kind of getting ahead of yourself with like the actions, which is kind of sometimes the best way to find it in a lot of ways. Yeah, it can be. And, you know, that can make it a little scary too because then you you have this product and you're like, well, how do I brand it and how do I show showcase this to people? Um, and that can be a challenge, I think. Absolutely. So how did you kind of 
overcome not knowing how to brand yourself to how you found out like your why and where you are today? So um, I, I realized through other like interviews and um, guest blogging and things like that when I was explaining why I did the photo shoot, um, what my why kind of is for my business. And the, the reason why I did the photo shoot um, of the Cap Parade, I think really was focused on this idea that all of these people came together. And it took me talking to a lot of the people that were at the parade that then would say, oh, I want to buy your photo or I bought your photo. And, oh, I was right there in the parade. And, you know, they'll point to mm. places in the crowd and say, like, that's exactly where I was. Yeah. And, um, and it's so cool because I've met a lot of different people and I've heard from a lot of different people and different kinds of people from all different backgrounds. And I just realized, wow, I have these photos that have all of these people in them that all came together for one reason Mm -hmm. and everyone got along and everyone united over it. And I just thought that was like the most amazing thing that, um, all of these people came together for this one common cause. Yeah. And I thought if I could capture this, then, you know, they'll have this lasting memory. Um, and now I've kind of built a brand around that. So it's really the idea that I want to be able to, create kind of a creative vision that allows people to become united through my products and services. Absolutely. So do you do everything Cleveland related or you kind of, you've branched out into a few other cities as well, correct? Yeah. So after um, Cleveland, we saw, you know, we saw a lot of um, positive feedback from people in Cleveland that loved the photos. And, you know, I think they just loved having this memento of this, um, parade that they were at, this special event to them that was so long awaited. And so we decided, you know, that would be something that some other cities would probably like too. Um, so we actually, when I say we, I mean my husband and I, cause he helps me with everything <laughs> in the business. Um, so we decided to, um, you know, say, okay, the next time there is a big sports parade, like the Cavs parade, we're going to do it. Yeah, this was probably like in July, I would say when we were making this decision. So we didn't know where the Indians were going to be. And we didn't know who they were going to be playing. Um, And then it happened that they were in the World Series. And everyone was asking me, are you going to take photos if they, you know, if there's a parade or if they, you know, if they win the World Series? Uh And I was like, yeah, of course, like, I would love to. I think that would be so great. Um, and unfortunately it didn't go that way, but like I said, we had made that decision, you know, before they were even in the world series. So we did go to Chicago and take photos of the, um, Cubs parade. And then we actually did the Boston, um, New England parade when they won their sixth Super Bowl. I think it was. Oh, fun. That's awesome. Or it was Tom Brady's six. It was like their 11th or something. But, um, yeah, so now, again, that's another thing that I've kind of realized is that this is something that um, really is kind of a niche for me. For sure. And it's it's so cool how you fell into it in that way and how you continue to evolve it and build it out in different cities and different ways. It's just, that's so cool. And it celebrates such, like, camaraderie and just the passion that people can't usually get from their photos, like, in that big, big scale. So I love it. (laughs) Um, so as you've been building it out, have there been any values that you've been following? I know, um, you kind of mentioned that camaraderie and like the gathering and that kind of thing, but have you picked out any value words that you're following as you build this out? Value words. That's interesting. I've worked on my personal brand and I have values for my personal brand, but when it comes to the business, um, I think... Let me try to think about some of the core values. Um, I think really, I don't know if there's a value word or words, Mm -hmm. but something I value and I've always valued, regardless of how it comes through in my life, is um, I love taking something old or taking something kind of ordinary or even just seeing something ordinary as something new. So I've always loved... um, you know, art and design and styling and just looking, you know, I love, um, I love this idea that something that might be ordinary could actually become something that is, um, seen in a different way and and seen as, I guess you should, I guess you could say extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I Um, love that. 
So I think that those are kind of like my guiding values that I've always kind of encompassed mm-hmm. that something um, that might be old can become new. So whether that's like, you know, taking an old photo and putting it in a new frame and putting it in a new setting um, or I guess, you know, taking this idea of the parade where I, I just wanted to kind of go down there and be with everyone and then seeing it in a different way, um, you know, from above and more capturing it for everyone so that it can become a lasting memory. Yes. Um, and really completely kind of changing. Are in line, I think. It completely changed your life in the process, right? Right. Yeah, it totally did. So how did you make the leap from going for, to AG to Emily Roggenberg photography and just how was that whole process for you? And when did you decide like, okay, like I'm not just selling these prints, like this is my business and I'm going to take this full time. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so basically what happened was, you know, I came down from the helicopter and dropped my friends off and I raced home and like edited the photos and put them up for sale. And, um, I just tried to see what the response was from them. Uh I wasn't sure what it was going to be. And so uh, it took probably like a day or two of promoting them. And then, I mean, it's weird talking about this, but they kind of blew up. Like they just were, I was getting orders like right and left. And I was going back to my work at, um, I was going back to my job in, you know, corporate America. Mm -hmm. And my husband was actually at home at the time because he had uh, more, he had left corporate America sooner than I did. So he was at home watching these orders come in and he was like, you got to leave your job right now. And like, (laughs) you know, you have to fill the orders. Like we have so much to do. And I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't know how this is going to last. So let's just see. Um, So it probably took honestly a couple of weeks for me to just really think on everything. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, a big part of it too was my, like I said, my husband was in corporate America before and then he had left and started, um, his own business. And so he was saying, you know, you could come and help me and we could just gotcha. kind of see how it goes, just the two of us working together. And so I think that was even before I took the photos. So after I took the photos and saw a positive response from them was really when um, I kind of knew like, okay, I think this is something that we have. I, th- I think we have something here. Mm-hmm. So it probably took a couple of weeks. And then I finally, it was about a month later that I officially left my corporate job. Um, but yeah, that's so cool. Well, yeah, it, it feels like it almost like happened backwards, but in this perfect way, because usually people are like, Oh, I'm going to build this business. And then that's going to finally like build up. And then I'm going to fi- like quit my job. But like for you, it felt like you were, you were just following what felt right to you. And then it all worked out, which is really cool. It ha- it seems like it happened a lot quicker than it might for some people. Do you feel that way? I do. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, that can make it hard to relate because I, I do think it usually happens the other way around. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've just always been a person that well, I just follow my gut. And so if something feels right to me, then I just right. go that way. And that has usually resulted in things going a little backwards. For me. <laughs> but it's cool to hear that story. And just when you followed your gut, that it all ended up working out and it's still working out and doing really well. So it's, it's an inspiring story to hear. Especially since mine was a lot different (laughs) and it took like five years for me of building my business before I'm like, all right, do I have the courage to quit my corporate job? (laughs) And I find it took like a crazy medical diagnosis for me to finally be like, okay, I need to work from home. So I'm not like letting anyone down. So I just, I love that you just made the leap and it worked out just as well. So that's, I mean, there's so many ways people can go about doing that, but it's great to hear that you followed your gut and um, it just led to that. So that's awesome. So I would love to hear um, if there are any challenges that have popped up um, since you've been growing your brand and business and how you've kind of worked through them. Yeah, definitely. Um, I spent a little bit of time thinking about this because I thought it might be something that you would ask. Mm -hmm. Um, And Honestly, the first thing that popped into my mind when I started thinking about challenges were just, like, what isn't a challenge that's going to come up with starting your own business? Yeah. Um, Because I think there are so many, and there's so much unknown. Um, But I tried to focus on a couple of, like, key things that 
um, I have encountered that hopefully I can like uh, say how I've you know tried to yeah to get through them um, so again I think the unknown is something that is just always going to be a little scary and can prohibit you from moving forward mm-hmm. um, whether that be just things you don't know how to do in your business or um, you know where the next paycheck is going to come from you know it can present itself in a bunch of different ways but for me I think the, some of the biggest challenges were the things that I didn't know how to do so um, like in-depth financials and um, you know getting a trademark for something or getting my photos copyrighted. Um, So that was something that luckily I had my husband there to help me who does so much of that stuff. And he really doesn't get enough credit (laughs) (laughs) because I'm, you know, I'm kind of the face of the brand just because it's my name, but he's the one that is always doing, you know, our finances, our legal work, our taxes, thank God. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Do those. Um, So, you know, I think my point is that while all of those things were challenges, it also helped immensely to have help from somebody else. Mm -hmm. Um, So my biggest advice for entrepreneurs is to find out like what those things are that you're, that maybe aren't your strengths and either, you know, try to improve on them yourself. Cause I know so many people are solopreneurs Mm -hmm. um, and do it themselves. Or, you know, if you have a partner or if you, if you can even hire somebody to just outsource some of those things that you um, aren't necessarily the best at, I would definitely recommend yeah. having help where you can. I'm a huge proponent of that. It has been... I I think I started off trying to do everything myself and then I was just like crying over my computer just because I wasn't working in my expertise. And as soon as I was hiring out for development for websites and even just like my taxes, like I have my accountant and I have um, like a virtual assistant who kind of keeps everything together for me and I'm able just to like work in my area of expertise. Like I'm able to do this podcast. I'm able to do the client work. Um, and I'm able to do the creative stuff that I love. And it has been so helpful because I can just focus on what I really do best and then have other people supporting me. And it feels so good. And I'm paying those people, but it's great when you can get them in a husband or a partner or yeah. people too. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. I completely agree with you. I think that we as a society should play on our strengths and should play on other people's strengths and not try to put them in positions that aren't suited for them because I really think that we all have these strengths for a reason. Absolutely. And And we're going to be better off. And not trying too hard to like... That we're passionate about. Yes. And then not trying to work too hard on like building up the things that you're not the best at. Like... Right. I know sometimes you're like, oh, like I'm not the best at blank, so I should probably work on that to get better. It's like, why don't you put that energy into getting better at what you're already great at? Um, I right. think the strengths finder test, like, are you a big um, fan of personality tests by any chance? Yes. Oh, me too. I love them. <laughs> I wrote a newsletter a couple um, weeks ago and I was just like, here's all the personality tests that I take and why I love them. <laughs> um, yeah. But Strengths Finder is definitely one of them. And I love how they find your strengths and then like kind of teach you how you can even like get better at those things. And it's not about following the things that you're not so great at. Maybe it's recognizing them so that you can see yeah. when you're not using them and learning how to either hide hire them out, get support in that aspect, or maybe it's something that you just don't do as a business owner. Like, I know we all have to do our taxes, but um, like, say if web design was something that was really hard for me and my business, maybe that's something that like, as a service, I would let go eventually. Like, I I, I love yeah. it now, but um, at some point, maybe it's like, I just focus on the branding. Like, maybe I don't do the web design because I just want to focus on the expertise. So I think following your strengths can sometimes help you niche yourself even further, which can sometimes be a really good thing. I totally agree. I'm 100% on board with that. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So were there any other challenges that you've um, had pop up for you? Yeah. So I think the the absolute biggest thing that um, my husband and I together as business owners have encountered is just this idea of staying focused. It's, um, it's still something we struggle, struggle with. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I think, um, 
I don't know. I think a lot of people are naturally really good at something and then they're like, okay, this is when I want to build my business around. Whereas for him and I, we're both kind of like, um, we're both kind of just jack, jacks of all trade, I guess you would oh, say. Yeah. And we always were, you know, I love being creative and I love creativity. I love change and excitement, but I didn't always know it was going to be photography. And, um, you know, we didn't always know. We also own um, an apparel business and we didn't always know we were going to own an apparel business. Mm. Um, and so we just kind of have a couple of, uh, we've had, you know, different ideas along the way that we've had to put to the side because we really just want to um, become more focused in the things, like you said, that we've found that we can be good at. So the photography is something that um, I really feel passionate about and I feel like I have a connection with. Mm -hmm. And being able to stay focused on that has been really helpful so that I don't have to, um, you know, like compromise compromise the work and the effort that I'm putting into that on something else. Right. And then maybe eventually it gets to this point where it kind of starts running itself and then you get to put your passions into something else. Or I feel like the way you work, you're just going to keep evolving as things pop up and it's just going to be awesomeness every time. (laughs) Thank you. I really appreciate that confidence because sometimes I'm like, are we doing the right thing? (laughs) Have you, um, have you heard of Caroline Wagner? Wagner, I can't pronounce her last name. She um she just got married to Jason Zus, Zook, um and she runs the Made Vibrant blog. Oh, I don't think I have. Oh. I'll have to look her up. She is a friend of mine and she came on the podcast a little bit ago, but she just got married to her husband, but they've been together and working together as entrepreneurs for a really long time and I feel like you and your husband would one, probably, like, really relate to them um, because they're always doing these, like, entrepreneurial things. And they're, like, jumping from, like, just different things that are inspiring them to, like, next projects. And it's it's really cool to see how they're growing. Um, I don't know. I just, I think you kind of remind me of her with um, just all the different things that you have, like, your hands in as far, and also working with your husband in an entrepreneurial way. Yeah, that sounds... Yeah, that sounds totally relatable. I would love to check it out. It's called yeah. Made Vibrant. Made Vibrant. Yeah, that's hers. And then they okay. just did this thing. I think it just ended, but it was called um, Buy Our Future. And so they were doing this whole promotional thing. They have a bunch of courses and um, just things that they've put out um, individually and together. And the Buy Our Future is a thing where they're like, okay purchase this and you get everything that we've ever created and you get everything that we ever will create in the future, which was really cool. So that is really cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if they're still selling it, but I just thought that was such a cool concept and it's nothing like, it's nothing like anything I've heard before. So it's just, it's cool. So yeah, for any other couple people out there listening, go check them out because they're like just such a fun, inspirational couple as far as entrepreneurship goes. Yeah, that's awesome. I can't wait to check it out. Yeah. So I would love for you to go into any kind of strategic tips or tactics um, that you've kind of been learning as you've been building your business and that you can share with the audience. Do you have anything like that? Yeah, definitely. Um, and it you know, I do have tips, but also I'm still learning. So. Yeah. Oh, of course. I think we're all still learning. <laughs> but it's fun yeah, learning exactly. from the things that you might have figured out already. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, I think the biggest thing for me at first and, like, still now is just really scheduling my time. Mm. Um, I don't know if you're somebody who does that as well. Or I like, need you know, to. To the, to the point where it's, um, it's just really something that I – like need a calendar. I need to like see exactly what I'm doing that day. Um, you know, I'm a big like list person and like mm-hmm. um, outline person. So having a calendar and having like specific tasks that I need to do day by day instead of like one giant list has been really helpful for me. Oh, that yeah. I kind as soon as I quit my um, job, I was just in this mode of I'm going to have freedom and choose how I what I want to do every day. And I've kind of been in that like mode ever since. And then I just got married in February. So that kind of was 
I was doing a lot of things that were on specific deadlines and I every week was so different just because of wedding planning. So I'm just in this phase post wedding now. Um, It's been about like six weeks and I haven't had a schedule, but I'm craving one. Um, And I really need in like I've had some health issues pop up as well. So that has kind of put me in a little bit of a weird like. I'm just sleeping till noon some days, like just not even trying to. I just like have to to heal my body. And so things have been a little weird, but I'm like, I want to be on a schedule so bad because I am not the best version of myself right now. And I know to be that person, I need to be on a better schedule as far as sleep and when I'm um, taking calls and doing my work and all that stuff. So yeah, I totally yeah. agree. And I'm running in the opposite right now, and it is terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how when you're in um, a structured environment like a corporate job mm-hmm. and you decide to leave, you think that your world is just going to be like travel all the time and like yeah. <laughs> school every day and like just hang out. And it's like, actually, no, I'm pretty much working all the time. Yes. Um, and you do, you find that like even when you, you know, when I'm not scheduling out my time and when I don't have that like scheduled work time, I'm like, I same as you. It's like, Oh, well I need to get back to this. And like, I have to like have this routine. I don't know if that's just like ingrained in our DNA for me, like, the society of America and not being able to relax. Ever. Right. But, and do you feel guilty? I Cause totally like sometimes agree. I'm like, Oh, I'll stop working. And there's nothing else like that I have to do today. So I'll be like, okay, I'm calling it quits today. But I, then I feel like guilty. I'm not doing like the big to-do list that I have that like has no timeline. Um, and I'm yeah. like, oh, I should be doing that. Like I'm going to be up till midnight tonight, but I'm just going to watch Netflix and I should be right. like redoing my portfolio or this or that, but it's not, you can't do that all the time either. So I don't know. Yeah. Agreed. And I, I totally agree with what you were saying about, um, Sometimes you just have to let yourself rest and, like, recharge. Yes. I'm because definitely in I, a recharge I, mode. I think as, like, an entrepreneur especially, you can just get into this trap of, like, constantly working and constantly going and not, like, pausing to stop and think, again, about, like, your brand or your, you know, mental health, your energy levels and just things like that. You just need to take a break every once in a while and kind of reset everything. Absolutely. Was there, have you, since you quit your job or the corporate life, have you um, scheduled like a just vacation where you're not working or anything like that to get that break in? Um, I wouldn't say like a just vacation where outside of like visiting family or like having other obligations I don't think I've scheduled really just like a vacation to Mm. hang out which now that you say that I'm like I should really do that yeah because I know like I'll go on some vacations but I'm like oh but I'm gonna work on this and this and this and then it feels like I never actually got to relax so right and then also with technology there's kind of like no excuse to be on vacation you can just bring your computer like right with social media you can always be posting you know and it's like oh well now this turn this was supposed to be a vacation and I just like got my computer out for what I thought was yep. be, and then it then turns into like two hours you know yeah so it is a battle but. I did that like I was able to just like for our honeymoon, of course, like, I just was like, I am not working. Like, this is strictly vacation and fun and relaxing. And it was like, just being able to disengage from everything was the most relaxing week of my life, I think. And it was just so much fun. So, nice. so yeah, I'm like, in the Where future, you your honeymoon? we went to Carmel Valley um, out in California. So we were, oh, we're trying wow. to have babies right away so um I was afraid of the Zika virus and so I just wanted to like go somewhere in America um and we just drank a bunch of wine and it was awesome so that we, sounds amazing yeah wine tastings every day thank you <laughs> it was awesome yeah. it was so much fun um yeah and yeah just super relaxing honeymoon which was great like I needed that so much it's good yeah <laughs> Um, so I would love for you to go into talking about anything that you're really liking right now and that you want to spread the word about. Uh, Okay. So I thought about this and I wish I could say something that 
like was more meaningful. But um, <laughs> this is the fun I know, question. I, I thought of a couple <laughs> things. So the the first thing that came to my mind was coffee. <laughs> uh huh. Because who doesn't love coffee? Right. Um. So I actually, before we started talking, like wanted to sit down and be in a quiet place and kind of just like be calm and uh-huh. relax a little bit to think about some of these answers. Um, so I like set, I went and made myself coffee and one of my favorite ways to make it is, I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's called Bulletproof. Yeah. Um, and so have you had it? I have. Okay. Well, go into exactly what it is because I do a weird little version of it, but I don't think it's the real one. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I mean, I don't even think I've ever had the real one. I think it honestly is trademarked or something in Portland. I don't know, somewhere. (laughs) But basically what it is is um, just coconut oil and grass-fed butter and coffee, and you blend it instead of, like, stirring it. Okay. And it just creates this, like, delicious, like, semi-creamy, frothy, amazing coffee. Yeah. I guess it's supposed to be... Um, a more sustained energy throughout the day Mm -hmm. instead of, um, you know, just like a quick hit. But I really just like the taste and I feel like it's just something that it's kind of like a fun little routine for me, you know, every morning to just like get my coffee and, um, and it feels in a way like a little bit healthier maybe than putting like cream in my coffee and sugar. So it's a nice little substitute for that. Yeah, I've been, I do, I blend just the coconut oil, so I haven't done the butter. Um, but I love the coconut oil because it gives it this like coconutty, delicious flavor. Um, and it just gets frothy. I feel like I'm having a coconut latte. And um, yeah. yeah, it's just so good. And I started doing that because. I started trying to like get like rid of dairy in my life a little bit yeah. more. Um, and so I was like, oh man, I'm going to miss um, lattes. And somebody told me about that and I tried that. And sometimes I'll put cinnamon or vanilla and yeah. just different spices and it's so good. So that's what I, I think I've not really done the real Bulletproof, but I do, I blend the coffee with the oils and it's delicious. <laughs> yeah, so good. Isn't it? Yes. Awesome. Um, so are there any products or services that you're offering that you would like the audience to check out? And then also I'd love for you to share where people can find you online um, and on social media. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, we definitely offer um, products and services as far as photography goes. Um, all of my photos are for sale on my website, which is just my name, emilyroggenberg.com. And hopefully Kelsey will put that in the oh, name of for the, sure. <laughs> the spelling because I'm sure that none of you will be able to spell it on your own. So, <laughs> I definitely um, will. So yeah, we'll, we'll make sure you can get that. But yeah, we have, um, we have parade photos, um, aerial photography, and I do have some other like landscape photography and things like that. Um, I also do some like family photography um, and portraits and, things along those lines, but, um, yeah, you can find it all on my website. Awesome. So the one I'm most excited about um, is actually she just took um, balloons that spelled out Cleveland and put them like the whole Lake Erie's in the background. And I'm just obsessed with them. I think they're so pretty. And I just Thank Lake Erie is my favorite. I got like wedding pictures on Lake Erie. Um, I'm from Erie, Pennsylvania originally. So it's like even though I'm in Cleveland now, I feel like Lake Erie in general is like my home. And I feel like that picture just mixes like my new home with my like old home. And that's just like a personal little thing that I get out of that. But I love it. And I'm sure everybody like when they're looking at that or any of your things, they have their own stories and their own connections to your work in that cool way. And um, that's, it's one of the reasons I thought um, your brand was just so special for our city and for people in general to hear about. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I have definitely encountered that people will, it's so cool to hear you say like, you feel like Lake Erie is a part of home for you Mm -hmm. because you're from Erie PA and to hear everyone's stories. I mean, I don't, I don't think that's something I was even anticipating, but once I hear them, I'm like, this is why I do what I do. Like, yes. Okay, this is my <laughs> you know, it's so, it's so nice to hear that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I love it so much. I need to get one ASAP. <laughs> um, so how, how can people, um, find you on social media? So 
again, it's just my name, Emily Roggenberg, um, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, and, you know, like Pinterest and things like that. But I mainly, um, you know, I mainly am pretty active on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I love getting to know more about how you started your brand and just everything behind it. So thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's been so fun. My first podcast. Woo! You You did awesome. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you to our sponsor, audible.com, for supporting the show. Please head to audibletrial.com slash pinegateroad to get a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute and head to iTunes to rate and review the show. It makes a big difference in growing the show, and I'll be here giving you a virtual high five behind the scenes. You can follow along with the studio for branding tips, advice, and general inspiration on Instagram, username Pinegate Road, or by heading to PinegateRoad.com for everything else happening in the studio. Sending lots of love and wishing you an awesome week. You've got this.